If you observe carefully the great characters of Genesis, I think you'll notice two different models of leadership, the model of Joseph and the model of Judah. We also know that we'll have two messiahs, the messiah son of Joseph, Mashiach ben Yosef, and the messiah son of David, Mashiach ben David from the tribe of Judah. Why do we need two messiahs? Why isn't one enough? What could each one accomplish which the other cannot? In Parshat Vayigash, we see a confrontation between these two giants of men. When Judah is standing up to Joseph for his brother Benjamin, willing to sacrifice himself in exchange for Benjamin's freedom. I would call it horizontal and vertical forms of leadership. Both have advantages and disadvantages, which makes these two figures complementary. You see, Joseph gets along well with power. He has a smooth relationship with those above in the hierarchy. For example, he is beloved by his father and by Pharaoh and serves as a second in command. And we see that he gets along with those beneath him as well. He drew the sons of Bilha and Zilpa near, since they were slighted by the other brothers for being sons of handmaids. Joseph creates a vertical chain of command that is structured and obeyed by his subordinates when saving grain for the years of famine. Judah, on the other hand, defies authority. He is not scared to stand up to the viceroy of Egypt if he deems it necessary. Joseph could easily adjust himself to new situations. He could confirm to new realities while maintaining his own identity and independence. He gains respect of Potiphar, becoming his household CEO. Even in prison, he's appointed to be in charge of all the other inmates. Judah is very different in that regard. He does not gain his strength from titles. He's a natural leader. He does not need an official position for everyone to know he is the boss. Judah is someone who arises from among his peers. As Jacob later proclaims in his blessing, Yehuda Atayodukha Judah, you are praised by your brethren. He is the kid who becomes class president, not because he's the dean's choice, but rather because he's respected by his classmates. But the closeness to his peers could also be a great weakness. When Judah leaves his brothers Vayered Yehuda, he descends and he sins with Tamar. He is more influenced by his surroundings than Joseph. Joseph has the strength to be unfazed by his surroundings because he's more of a lone wolf. He has a Shem. He has Demud Yukanoshe Laviv. He has a vivid image of his father in his mind. But even though Joseph could make great personal sacrifices, he can't unite his brothers. Even after their reunion, the brothers are still apart from him. They never truly become one again. The Messiah, son of Joseph, will help the Jewish people survive among the 70 nations and keep its identity strong. Judah, on the other hand, is blamed for the sale of Joseph. Even though he may seem like the one who convinced not to kill him, but rather sell him as a slave. Our sages say that he was capable of saving him altogether because he was the only one whom the brothers would listen to. Judah is the leader who could bring the Jewish people together. With all his flaws, he possesses the power to make others follow him. And when Jews will unite, that will be the true redemption of Mashiach ben David.